Good evening, good evening, good evening. I am losing my voice. Yes, I am. But how is everyone doing tonight? So, you know, my girl came out with a grant. So, of course, of course, we have to get on this. Of course. So, tonight we can talk about, we're going to talk about some grant funding, talk about getting our businesses ready for grants, the benefit of grants, how easy it is to get a business grant. So, the first thing we need to talk about is when it's time for getting funding for your business, you are trying to start your business, grow your business, expand your business. A lot of times the business owner doesn't take into consideration what is the cost of getting the funding. Meaning, yes, I can go get this loan, but can I afford the loan? Do I have enough revenue coming in every single month to be able to pay my regular bills and to be able to pay this note? If I just go out and get all these loans, max out my credit cards, I'm going to have the monkey around my neck. The monkey is stress. So we go, we max out our credit cards, we take out all the money in our 401k, we drain our savings account, we get the inventory, we get the equipment, we, we got our business going, now we're live, we don't have any clients, we don't have any cash flow. Now besides our house bills being due, these business bills are now due, this note is due. Now we have the monkey around our neck. Now we're arguing. Now we're stressed. Now we're either not eating or we're eating too much. Now we cussing and fussing at the kids at home. Now we arguing with our spouse. Now we not having sex. Now we talking about divorce or bankruptcy. So when I talk about funding for a small business, we don't need to get all the money in the world on day one because you may not be able to afford all the money in the world on day one. If you have a new business or if we are pre-revenue, meaning we're not really making money yet, we need to be focusing on things that are going to generate income, marketing. If we're trying to expand our business or grow our business, whenever we're expanding, we will be increasing our debt for the long run, but we have to make sure that we can afford what we're doing. That is why I harp to you guys about applying for business grants. Business grants are great because number one, we do not have to pay the money back. So on the first, there is no bill coming saying, hey, you got this grant, now you owe us X amount of money. Number two, it's not based on your credit. So maybe you have bad credit or maybe your credit is extended. I've already used up my credit to get the business going. I have no more utilization. It's not based on any kind of business financials. So we don't have to come up with two years tax returns. We don't have to come up with a profit and loss statement. So business grants are a really great way to get your hand on capital. You need to have an LLC, an EIN, and a business bank account to get a grant. Now, I, of course, don't want our business to be basic. I would like our business to stand out from all of the rest. So a way to make your business stand out is, number one, having a branded email address. So Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, all those accounts are considered personal email accounts. We want to have a branded email account. So jo info at joysearrings.com. Uh, customer service at joysearrings.com. 
Now, if you're interested in a more in-depth course on how to apply for business grants, I am doing my last free masterclass this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you type in bank in the comments, a link will be sent to you. We want to have a branded email address. We want to then have a website or a landing page. So something pops up on the World Wide Web regarding our business. We also want to have our own business social media. So yes, we can promote our business on our personal page, but if we're going to have a grant reviewer look at our business social media, we want them to go to the business page, not our personal page, and see us and our cousin Tuki two-stepping at the family reunion, okay? So we want to have our LLC EIN business bank account. They want to have our branded email address. We want to have a website and our business social media. So my favorite person in the whole entire world, Beyonce, has just launched a $10,000 grant. Now, let me say, let me say all what she's doing. Hold on. Let me go on what she's doing. So, if I have any cosmetology students, first she's giving away a scholarship, okay? She's giving away a $10,000 scholarship, um, but you have to be located in Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, or New Jersey. You have to um, be in cosmetology school. Baby, not the Franklin Institute. Come on. So if you're in Atlanta, you have to be um, a student at the uh, Beaver Beauty Academy. If you're in Chicago, you have to be Trends Beauty Academy. If you're in L.A., Universal College of Beauty. If you're in Houston, the Franklin Institute, that's a black beauty, supply, I mean, black beauty school. And if you're in New Jersey, it's going to be the Janice Cosmetology Academy. So she's giving away to any any cosmetology student in ten uh in those five states at those schools. She's gonna give you a ten thousand dollar scholarship. Okay, now for hair salons, hairstylists, and barbers, she's giving away ten thousand dollars if you're in the same states: Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, L.A., and New Jersey. Here are the requirements. You have to um, be in one of those five states, have your cosmetology license for a minimum of two years, and be in business for one year. But you can either have your own salon, have your own salon suite, have your own salon booth. And baby, she has, she has in here, that's why I love B. Operate a salon or work out of your home. Baby, you can be at your house trying to get your business together. And Beyonce said, I got $10,000 for you, okay? So if you want, um, my this grant's going to be in my grant bundle. If you want my grant bundle, it's $99. Just type in grants in the chat. If you want to take my free course on this Sunday as to how to really apply, find, and get business grants, type in bank in the comments and a link will be going out. This is going to be the, the Be Good Salon Business Grant. So if you are a barber, if you are a cosmetologist, if you are a hairstylist, Beyonce, you know, she just came out with her um with her um her new hairline. I order the hair oil. I will tell y'all how it is when I get it. Um, so she's giving a grant away, a ten thousand dollar grant away for hairstylists, cosmetologists, and barbers. So I'm assuming. So what what would a cosmetologist else be like facials? I'm th I'm assuming facials and stuff. But you got to be in Houston, you got to be in Chicago, you got to be in New Jersey, you got to be in Atlanta, or you got to be in New Jersey. Now, besides that, they have business grants. Let me get to my to my grant bundle. Hold on. Let's see what's going on for February. <clears throat> I know FedEx is doing a $30,000 grant for small businesses in February. 
Let me go on my list. If you want to take my course this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, just type in bank in the chat. So for February, we have um, Bank of America has a $25,000 grant. TikTok has a $10,000 grant. For my women-owned businesses in February, let's see what we got going on. We have um, a $2,000 grant from Silver and Riley Women. And then the Black Girls Ventures has a $10,000 grant. We have um, Barefoot Wine. That wine company is giving away a woman-owned business $10,000 grant. And then the uh, Voodoo Visionaries has a $10,000 grant for women. Of course, the Boss Network, they're doing a $10,000 grant and mentorship. So there are grant, baby, there are, there's a, uh, a black photography grant. There are grants out there for women-owned businesses, for small businesses. If you have a business, you need to be applying to five to 10 business grants every single month. You want to apply for five to 10 business grants every single one because so number one is going to make you feel more confident the more that you start applying for grants. Number two, you're going to, um, once you kind of map out what you're asking for, you're going to realize that the grant questions are going to be the same on all the grant applications. So all you're really doing is copying and pasting your answers. If you get my grant bundle, I have training videos in the bundle explaining to you what to ask for, what not to ask for, how to put the applications out, how to make your business stand out. Now, that's just February. March, Amazon has a grant. Um, there are a lot of grants. There are, there are grants every single month all throughout the year. What you want to do is you want to continuously apply for grants. Once you realize how simple they are, most of the applications are going to be online where you're just typing in the answer. You're not having to do a 20 page grant proposal. They're going to tell you, hey, in 300 words or less, tell us why you need the money. So they're not even wanting a long dissertation. They're going to be limiting you as to how much wording you're going to actually be putting on the application. So what kind of questions are they going to, they're going to be asking you on a grant application? They're going to be asking you, why did you start your business? What makes your business different than the competition? Or what is your unique selling proposition? They're going to be asking you what challenges did you face starting your business. They're going to ask you why do you need this money and how can it help you out. So you want to make sure that you're asking for things that can help you make money. So I always tell people, ask yourself, what could you use that would help you make money in the next 30 days? Could you use some additional employees to help you maybe run the day-to-day -day, um, operations of your business so you can be more hands-on in the actual business? Maybe hiring some admin, answer the phones, response to email, work your social media, those kind of things. Um, maybe if you had some new software or some new equipment, you can either get a new job going or get the job done faster. Maybe you've been working out of your house and now it's time to actually go into an office space. Or maybe you're already in an office space or you're in a warehouse, but now you need a bigger space. You can be asking for rent. Maybe you need some more inventory or to be able to buy your inventory at a larger quantity to get it at a cheaper price. Maybe you need a, a commercial vehicle to help transport some of this equipment. Maybe there is an expensive software that you need that will help you be able to run your business more efficiently. Maybe you need to, instead of making your product at home, it'd be more cost effective and more time beneficial if you could ship your product off or ship your formula off and have it mass produced or manufactured somewhere, already put in the packaging and then just arriving at your front door. 
So you want to ask for things that are going to be making you money. Things like paying yourself, like, hey, I have a grant bundle. I want to give a um, hundred people in my bundle for free and my bundle costs a hundred dollars. So I need $10,000 to give away my grant bundle. Well, number one, that's not making you any money. Number two, a business doesn't give away anything. Um, I want to pay off some debt or I'm behind on my rent. I want to catch up on some bills. Catching up on bills is not going to make you any money. I just need to have some operating expenses. I just want to have a cushion. Having a cushion is not going to make you any money. In business, you may not have a cushion. It's grimy out here. It's eat or get eaten, kill or be killed, right? So make sure that you're asking for things that are going to make you money. Well, why? You want to ask for things that are going to make you money because at the end of the year, they're going to come to you with an aha story. How did this grant money help you in your business. If you say, oh, well, I just paid off some debt, they don't want to give it to you. Why? Because you're going to be competing against another person who's saying, hey, I have a line wrapped around my barbecue restaurant. If I was able to take over the space next door, get some more tables, I could turn my tables over and make more money. The competition is, is, is also asking for money. Is legal zoom a good way to start a business up? Um, you can do legal zoom or you can have me form your LLC, whichever you would like. You want to ask for things that are going to make you money. If you just get the money and don't do anything with it, it's not going to be beneficial. If I'm behind our rent and I get a grant to pay my rent, all I did was buy myself 30 days. What's going to happen the next 30 days? I'm going to be in the same predicament. What do you need to generate some more leads, to generate some more income? Maybe if you have a product-based business, you need to do a new photo shoot. Maybe if you have a service-based business, you need to kind of just get you some um, uh, a whole bunch of new content. Maybe we need to have a marketing campaign to kind of get your product or your service out to a bigger demographic. You need to know what exactly it is that you need for your business to make money. A lot of times you're not winning the business grant because you're making your you're making your business sound poor. You're giving them a sob story. I was sick. I lost my clientele. I haven't worked in so long. I'm behind on my rent. I just need some I just need some operating expenses. I need somebody just to tie me over. Nobody wants to give their last uh, life jacket to the Titanic sinking ship. And there's a hundred people on the ship and it's sinking. Is one life jacket going to save anything or make a difference? No, it's not. So although a nonprofit is all about helping those in need, a business grant is saying, who is my go-getter? Who is my CEO that can flip this money, that can turn this $10,000 and get more product, get more inventory, can take this $10,000 and increase their sales by 20%, can open their new location? That's what they're looking for. So that's what you want to ask for when you're trying to apply for a business grant. What is going to make you money? I'm doing my last free masterclass this Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, if you would like to get a link to my masterclass, type in bank in the comments and a link will be sent to you. I'm going to be going over the proper business structure you need to have for that foundation to make sure that as you're building your business, you're building it on a strong foundation, not a shaky one. If your foundation is shaky, everything about to come down. It's only a matter of time. I'm going to be discussing how to protect your assets. So once you get past that startup phase, you're going to be acquiring assets, property, vehicles, copyright, trademarks. We want to make sure that our assets are protected just in case something happens, our assets are protected. 
I'm going to be going over what contracts you need to have in your business. How do you protect your trade secrets, your vendor list, your client list? How do you protect um how do you protect your employees from certain things? How do you protect how do you legally put money into your business? I'm going to be going over all the contracts you need to be able to um protect your business. If you want to book a consultation with me, you can just type in the word help H E L P and the link will be sent to you or you can click the link in my bio. If you want to come to my free masterclass on Sunday besides going on business structure, um protecting your assets, what contracts you need, I'm also going to be going over how to get business grants, what to ask for, how to find them. If you want to go to my free masterclass on Sunday, just type in the word bank in the comment. B A N K. So with with the proper business structure, we're making sure that everything is set up properly. So that when we build on our business, we know that the foundation is good. By setting up our business the correct way with our business structure, we're able to protect our assets. So a lot of times people jump in these business streets. I say this all the time. We cannot come out here in business two-stepping. We cannot come out here do si doing. It is grimy out here in these business streets. You can come out here and lose everything at the drop of a dime. You didn't know, did no one tell you, it was just a side hustle, but Kiki and them didn't tell me. All of that is, is, is negated. When you come out here with a business, whether you're working your full-time, part-time, it's your side hustle, you was just kidding, you was just playing. If you come out here wrong, you can lose everything. That's why I harp on business structure having the proper foundation is going to save you uh sleep it's going to save you heartache it's going to save you from either losing weight or gaining weight however you deal stress it's going to, let me get my monkey hold on let me get my monkey having the proper business foundation or business structure is going to keep him from around your neck. The monkey is stress. The monkey is finding out, oh, well, I have one LLC, but I just got a DBA for my other business because they said I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need to have two DBA. I didn't I need to have two LLCs. I just got a DBA, but I got one LLC. Well, let me tell you why that's not going to work. I'm doing a master class on this on Sunday. Type in bank in the comments for the link. So you go and form your LLC. I got Joy's. I always do Joy's Barbecue. I like Joy's Barbecue. I'm doing Joy's Barbecue. A DBA, it means don't be asked out. A DBA is when you go down to the city and you just go change your name. A DBA is no, is no protection for you. So I have my, I form my LLC. I have Joyce Barbecue. Joyce Barbecue, I own the real estate. I own some company vehicles for my catering. And I own a lot of equipment. Joyce Barbecue is slanging and banging. Joyce Barbecue is paying all these bills at home. Joyce Barbecue is paying these bills at the business. Joyce Barbecue has my spouse in a luxury car. Joyce Barbecue got these kids in private school. Joyce Barbecue got my son in football and my daughter, my daughter in ballet. Joyce Barbecue is paying all of my bills. I then say, you know what? I think I want to start a lash business. I want to have Joyce lashes. But you know what? Kiki said, I ain't got to get another. I already have an LLC. Kiki said, just go get a DBA and just put the DBA with my LLC. 
So before I pay this $500, I'm going to just see if Joy's Lashes can get going. And if I start making money off Joy's Lashes, then I'm going to go form an LLC. I want to first make sure I'm going to make some money. Let me tell you what that's going to bring the monkey around your neck. Okay, so Joy's Lashes is basically a big, a, now a big pot of gumbo with Joy's Barbecue. I'm mixing multiple businesses in one LLC, the biggest mistake. So I'm out here doing lashes. I'm not good. I put too much glue on the girl's eye. It makes her contact stick to her eye and it makes her go blind. She sues me and gets a $2 million judgment. I only have a $1 million policy. So now Joy's Barbecue, the LLC she was doing business with, is on the hook for a million dollars. Well, what they going to do? They're going to come to Joy's Barbecue and they're going to take my real estate. They're going to take my company car. They're going to take my equipment and they're going to take the $2 that Joy's Lashes has. Well, uh-uh. They can't touch Joy's Barbecue. Because Joyce Barbecue ain't got nothing to do with Joyce Lashes. Yes, it did. Because you did not separate Joyce Lashes from Joyce Barbecue. You combined it all in one. Because you want to save $500 on the LLC fee. So now your attorney tells you, you about to lose the real estate that Joyce Barbecue has. You about to lose all that money in the bank that Joyce Barbecue has. They're going to come in there and take all that equipment, all them fixtures out. Now you got to go home and tell that wife she got to turn in that, that luxury car and we got to get her to go to Corolla. All this shopping at Target and going to lunches, that's about to end. We got to now sell this dream house and go move back in to uh, one of our mama's house. These kids got to come out of private school and go back into public school. And we got to tell little Johnny he can't play football and little Susie she can't be in ballet. Now you arguing. You're not having sex. Now you at now you at a divorce attorney's house. Why? All because you did not want to pay five hundred dollars to properly structure your business. I don't have these props and I don't have these things around here trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you how it the it happens so quick. You lose everything so quick. You thought you was, you know, I'm about to live this dream on social media. They said, get my LLC on Monday. When I get my LLC, they're going to show me how to go to the bank on Tuesday and get a million dollars. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to be on the beach with my laptop because I'm the boss living my dream. That's not real. Not, 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 not in the real business world. That's not how business works. When you start your business, you are putting everything on the line and you can lose it just like that. You can be in bankruptcy court just like that. You're going to be in divorce court just like that. Your kid's whole lifestyle going to change just like that. I am doing a masterclass on how to structure your business this Sunday at 7 p.m. Type in bank in the comments for the link. So we don't want the monkeys. We don't want the stress. We don't want the headache. We don't want when something goes wrong in business, everything goes down the drain. So if I have Joyce Barbecue paying all my bills, paying for my lifestyle, paying for everything, and I'm thinking about starting a new business. I'm not forming the LLC because the business is making money. I'm forming the LLC to separate my barbecue business from the lash business. I'm paying the $500 without making a dime with my lashes to keep that monkey from around my neck. Is your marriage worth $500? Is your kids being able to be in extracurricular activities worth $500? Is your family able, is your family being able to go on a spring break, spring break vacation or a summer vacation worth $500? Is your family reunion or being able to pay your mama's car note or being able to send your mom and daddy $200 a month just because you love them, is that worth your $500? 
is being able to sleep at night and snore and get a good night's rest worth $500. So I always tell people, you're going to pay the cost. You can pay now or you can pay later. If you pay later, you always going to pay more. So is there a cheaper way of doing it? There is. But when you cut corners, hold on. When you cut them corners, when you try to save a buck, and we're talking about business, just know you're going to have these monkeys. I don't know how you can handle stress. I don't know how you handle the monkeys. Some people thrive in stress. If my back's against the wall and I'm fighting a bear, you better check on the bear. I don't know how you are. Other people, when they got too many monkeys, they're going to have a revolver against their head. They're going to be jumping off a bridge. They're going to be checking out a life. It, it's just too much for them. So, you already have your business that's paying for everything. We're forming the LLC to protect that business. We're forming the LLC because I don't want to combine any business. So same scenario, I do Joy's Lashes. I went and formed Joy's Lashes LLC, put too much glue on the girl's eye. It made her contact stick to her eye. And this is a true story. The glue on the eye with the contact going blind, a true story. She gets a million dollar judgment against me. She can sue Joy's Lashes. She going to get the little $2 that Joy's lash tag because clearly I'm not a good lash tag if I'm getting glue on people's cornea. But she not touching the barbecue money. I'm fighting a lawsuit. I'm probably going to have to close Joy's lashes. I'm going to have a judgment against Joy's lashes. But as I'm fighting this lawsuit, I got money from Joy's Barbecue to, number one, pay the attorney to fight for me for Joy's lashes. My son is still playing football. My daughter's still in ballet. That wife is still driving that, that, that Lexus, that Benz. She's doing her little weekly PTA mom lunch meeting. She in Target. She out my hair. I'm still in my dream house. The bill's still getting paid. Life is still going on. As I'm fighting a lawsuit. That is the importance of business structure. Your business structure will make or break you. The problem is once something happens, once the lawsuit is filed, we can't do anything after that. I can't restructure your business after the lawsuit's filed, that's going to be deemed a fraudulent transaction. And they're going to undo everything that you call me to do. So all this stuff has to be done, not now, but right now. So if you want to book a business structure call with me, where I will tell you personally how to structure your business, it's $200 for 30 minutes. Type in help in the comments and a link will be sent to you. If you want a budget or you want to learn about how to structure your business, how to protect your assets, what contracts you need, and how to get business grants or business funding that's not based on your credit, type in bank in the comments. And I'm doing one more free masterclass this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You want to make sure that your structure is correct. You want to make sure that your assets are protected. You want to make sure that you understand what your assets are. You want to make sure that anyone who is working in your environment, your employees, your independent contractors, you want to make sure that they're signing the correct contracts so they can't take your trade secrets. They can't take your secret sauce and go do it themselves or go give it to the competition. A lot of times, business owners don't even think about these employees. Oh, this employee can't do what I can do. You know how much money it costs to start this business? I ain't worried about a little nine, ten dollar hour employee knowing my stuff. Well, guess what? Your competition worried about you. Your competition gonna send their cousin, their nephew, they 
they friend who young to come and apply at your job. They're gonna, you're going to see a regular person coming in. No college degree, just regular. But it's going to be that stellar employee. They on time. They early. Every time you tell them to do something, they doing it. And you think, God bless you with this off the chain employee. Ain't nothing but Satan. It's the competition. They done sent someone in your camp to get your entire framework. And you let your guard down because the employee is so good on time. Stay late. Come early. Anything you ask them to do, they going to do. Oh, they are so nice. I'm not going to make them sign this contract. They so nice. They wouldn't dare steal from me. I'm not, I'm going to I'm going to show them my formula. So I'm at Joyce Barbecue and this employee is just she's just so wonderful. I'm going to mix my barbecue sauce in front of her. In fact, I'm going to have her start mixing my barbecue sauce. Hey, wonderful employee, here's my recipe. It's two cups of this and three cups of this and four cups. Oh, I trust her. And the whole time, they being that stellar employee because they cousin, they uncle, the competition done sent them in there to learn the whole system. Now, when they go and take your barbecue recipe, Kiki probably can't compete with you because she ain't got no money. But whoever is your biggest competitor if they had your secret sauce, well, now they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you or blow you out the water because they got the money. It's called business. That's why I always say, don't come out here in these business streets shoot shooing. It's grimy out here. It's eat or get eaten. Kill or be killed. And you can't be mad. It's just business. That's why you should have your every employee signing a non-disclosure agreement. That's why you shouldn't be mixing your formula at the location. It should be mixed somewhere off-site. If you're going to have an employee mix it, have an employee who mix it who don't maybe speak English. You got to understand that although in your mind you're just trying to grow as you grow, the competition is saying, wait a minute, my sales will drop 10%. Who's Joyce Barbecue? She's making some noise. You just trying to pay the bills. You just trying to, you know, keep up with the inventory theft, I mean, with the employee theft. You're trying to get some marketing going. You're just trying to, you know, just, just live your life. You're not even realizing that as you grow, you're taking money out the competition's mouth. You think they happy that you're there? No, they coming for you. What are you doing to protect yourself? And you don't even think that anyone's coming for you because in your mind, you're not big. But if you come in here taking 10, 20% of my money, I got an issue with you. So it's so important you understand I don't care how small your business is. I don't care if you're doing your business out your mama's house. I don't care if you're doing business out your apartment complex. You go hit. You are going to hit. And when your business hits, when God gives you that increase, you go from zero to 130 days. Are you protected? Because once you start making the money, money is no longer your issue. See, a lot of people think once I make the money, my problems go away. Once you start making the money, your problems then start. If your problems can't be solved with money, you don't have no problems. You just need some more money. If, I'm going to say it again. If your problems can't be solved with money, you don't have no problems. All you need is some more money. A problem is something that can't be solved with money. A problem is my, my top manager who has all my access codes, has all my vendor lists, knows all my formulas, knows all my no know, knows everything, really is working for the competition. They must say my that that can't be stopped with money. 
Your whole game plan is now going to be gone. A problem is you don't switch vendors. You were trying to make some more money per per unit. So I sell this shirt and I'm known for this shirt. And uh, a t-shirt vendor told me they can give it to me cheaper. So I switched my vendor. But I didn't realize that with the cheaper vendor, when the people wash the shirt, all the pinstripes fade. Now, I done sold a thousand shirts at premium price. They thinking they getting the getting the regular shirt. I was trying to make five dollars more per per unit, and now I got a thousand shirts. The second that the second this shirt hits the washing machine, all the pinstripes gonna be gone. So now I got a thousand customers saying I paid fifty dollars, and they on Instagram showing how the shirt didn't hold up. Well, that's that's the problem. So once you start making money, now your now your real problems start. Now your business partner that you've been rolling with since the beginning of time, now they're looking at you like, man, if I can get him out, if I can get her out, I can get 100% of this. How can I get her out? You thought y'all was going to be in business together. Y'all thought y'all was going to be do or die. And they're looking at you like, I mean, she didn't put that much money in. See, they always forget how you start. Once that money hit that bank account, all that, all them struggle times disappear. All them times when you when 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 you showed up and, and put that sweat equity, they forgot about all that. Once that money hits that account, the real person comes out. And you're gonna find out everyone don't have character, everyone don't have integrity. Eat or be eaten, kill or be killed. So your business partner, you thinking, well, you know, we, we, we started in our apartment complex and it took us three years to get this thing going. And we're finally making it. And you're, oh, my God, we're going to be here forever. And they got the knife right here. And they're trying to think, do I stab it on the right side or the what's what's going to be what's going what's going to pop the biggest artery? I'm trying to pop an artery, not a vein. Where do I stab her? And you don't even see the hate. And you just thinking, oh my gosh, we're growing. And the whole time, they trying to take you out. They are plotting and planning on your demise. How am I going to just X her out my business? Welcome to business. It is what it is. So it's so important that before you come out here, don't come out here do -si doing Don't come out here two-stepping. Don't come out here shucking and jiving. I'm just going to try to see if something's going to shake. Because when you come out here, you are exposing everything to these business streets. So making sure that your business structure is on point. Making sure that you understand once you start acquiring assets, how you are supposed to be structured. Knowing how to protect yourself from employee theft. How to protect your vendor list, your recipes, your formulas, your trade secrets. And then how do I get money for my business to expand it without bringing the monkeys, without incurring all the extra debt? These are going to be the five things you need to understand before coming out in these business streets. So I am doing a free masterclass this Sunday. Type in bank in the comments for the link to go over before you come out here how to come out of heat, how to come out into business prepared. Because something will happen. You will make a mistake. No one is perfect. Your employee will make a mistake. They're not perfect. You may get into a contract dispute. You thought you agreed on one, two, three, and the other person heard three, two, one, and now you're going back and forth. Is it one, two, three, or three, two, one? It's just business. And now we're in litigation. You thought that the that the that the vendor you were getting your getting your products from was A1, but something happened on their end. And so now all of your inventory, let me let me give an example. Okay, I make <clears throat> I make a hair growth oil. I make a hair growth oil. And I import my avocado oil from this manufacturer. 
but the manufacturer had a bad batch of av avocado oil that I got, but I already mixed it into my product. And so with this bad batch of avocado oil with the enzyme that I have in here to make the hair, the, whatever enzyme I have in here to help make the hair grow, those two together is making people hair fall out. So I didn't shift a thousand units of this hair growth oil. Everyone's putting it on their edges and now the hair's falling out. Things happen in business. Things that are beyond your control will happen in business. So when I talk about lawsuits, when I talk about litigation, when I talk about things happening, I'm not saying that you're a bad business person. I'm not saying that you're doing something shady as to why you have the lawsuit. Good business people making innocent mistakes or having mistakes that have nothing to do with them cause lawsuits. What if you import cars? What if someone gave you, they paid you $300,000 to go find them, I don't know, a little Lamborghini and you got the car. And on the way to your dealership, the whole truck blew up. I have a dealership in Houston and I wasn't transporting a Lamborghini. I was transporting a Dodge Charger. But the entire two-story two, two trailer truck the whole truck blew up. I get a picture from the driver. The entire truck is in flank. Not the driver. I get a call from um from um DOT, Department of Transporta Department of Transportation. The entire trailer and the truck is in flames. And it's about six or seven cars on them trailers. One of them is mine. In flames. Burnt. Burn, burning as I'm looking at the video from DOT. So things will happen in business outside of your control. So, yes, you know, the trailer should have insurance and I'll be reimbursed, right? But the person who's waiting on the exotic Lamborghini and maybe they're going to be in, a, in, in, in an exotic car show. And I got to tell them that this one of one car that they entrusted in me to get from them. And I got the I got the car. I got it at the steel. But a fluke accident, the truck done burnt down. Now I got to tell him, baby, I don't have this car. A person who's buying a $200,000 car, they're not worried about the $200,000. They're wanting the car. So, yes, the, the, the transportation company is bonded and I got to file a claim. It's going to take me 60 days to get reimbursed what I paid for the car. But now I got an upset client because I didn't deliver. And I can say, well, oh, my God, I had no, I, I had nothing to do with, he don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear your excuses. You told me you're going to give me this car. And I have already in, enrolled in, a, in a, an exotic car show. Now I got to back out from this and blah, blah, blah. I promised my wife this car. So now they're mad at you. And it had nothing to do with you as a fluke accident. But that's what happens in business. Good thing, bad things happen to good people in business all day, every day. So when you are thinking about having a business, when you're about to start a business, don't look at the business as a side hustle. Don't look at the business as this little small thing I'm doing in my apartment. Don't look at the business as just this little small thing I'm doing at my mama's house. Facebook was founded in a college dorm room. Amazon started out of a garage. Multi-billion dollar businesses always start small. So I tell people on all my webinars, you don't have a side business. You don't have a small business. You have the next Netflix or the next Walmart. You have the next seven or eight figure business. You're starting out just like Walmart. You're starting out just like Amazon. You're starting out just like Apple. 
what they got that you don't got. Are they smarter than you? None of them started with no money. So they're starting off just like you. So when you're starting out your business, start with the mindset, I'm starting the next Walmart. So I need to start, I need to lay this foundation correctly. I need to protect all of my intellectual property. I need to be protecting my assets because I am starting a seven or eight figure business. I don't know what God told you you were starting. Okay, I'm just throwing out seven, eight. Maybe he said nine. Don't let me discount your business, baby. Maybe it's a nine figure business. I don't know what he told you. But whatever it is, you got to come out of here correct. So, if you guys are free on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I am doing my last free masterclass going over business structure, how to protect your assets, what contracts you need, how to get business funding that is not linked to your that is not linked to your credit and more importantly, marketing, how to go get your client and bring them to you. If you want to attend, comment bank in the comments and a link will be sent to you. If your page is private, DM me the word bank and I will send you the link. But before you come out here in these business streets, you need to understand how to protect every instance of your business. I didn't know, didn't no one tell me what I had thought. See, what had happened was none of that is going to take the monkeys off your back. No one's going to hear. No one's going to understand. No one's going to say, oh, it's your first business. Okay, just kidding. We're not going to sue you. Oh, it's your first business. Oh, okay. I'm not going to um take, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh take anything from you then. Oh, it's your first business. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you a pass. Oh, you, you don't have your MBA, so did no one teach you this? Oh, okay. That's going to be your do-over car. They don't care. Eat or be eaten, kill or be killed. So make sure when you're starting your business that you know exactly what you need to do for all stages of your business. So if you're in your startup stage, understand startup, but then you're going to grow. Your business will hit. I'm going to teach you how to market. I'm going to teach you how to go get your client and bring them to your storefront or to your website. So when you hit, what are you supposed to do then? As you grow, what are you supposed to do then? Well, as y'all can hear, I am losing my voice. I need to go drink me some tea, get some cough drops. You know, Satan, Sean, take me out before Sunday. Okay, you see how you see how Satan works. You see how Satan works. So this Sunday, seven p.m. Eastern time, I'm doing a free webinar. Free webinar. Okay, so everyone who says I haven't gotten paid, I can't afford you yet. When I get my money up, Black History Month, I'm giving back free. Masterclass, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Comment bank in the comments. DM me the word bank. I will send you the link. I will, of course, post this live on my page. If you kind of chimed in late and want to see what I was barking about in the beginning. But <clears throat> it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Every multi-million dollar business starts off rocky. Every business is start off, starting off robbing Peter to pay Paul. We're on that hamster wheel just trying to get something shaking, just trying to get something going, just trying to just trying to make just trying to make a dollar, trying to pay these bills, just trying to pay them payroll, just trying to pay that rent. But pretty soon you're gonna realize, wait a minute, I'm paying these bills. Wait a minute, I'm paying these bills. And I got some extra money. Wait a minute. These bills are on auto pay. And as soon as life gets to being good, as soon as you able to whoo, just breathe, as soon as life just looks like, you know what? This ain't too bad. 
said, that's when life starts to life. Something going to happen. It's just life. Life is going to be ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. Business is, 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 is fighting a bear every single day. You wake up every single morning fighting a bear. But the longer you've been in the game, the stronger you become, the wiser you are. So now I'm, I'm, I'm used to the bear. I'm, I'm not tripping over the bear. Bring a bear, lion, tiger, bring it. I've been through so much in business, it don't even faze me no more. It's kind of like having kids. That first kid, you know, you, you, you're going to buy everything for the first kid. Anything that's made for the first kid. The kid, the baby is, is coughing. You have, the, you have the pediatric urgent care. You're using the organic milk and the, and the bottle shipped in from heaven. Then you get that second kid. It's like, oh, now you already know the whole routine. I'm about to get the Walmart bottles, them Love's diapers. What's her temperature? It's only 102. She good. Just give her. Because you've already been through it. So any seasoned business owner knows, baby, every, every day is going to be something. They're, they're, they're not even shocked anymore. You like my bronzer, girl? This bronzer is going to be Mocha Miami from Fenty and... The second to the last dark uh, bronzer by Gucci. I mixed my little two bronzers together. So Gucci has like four bronzers. It's going to be like number three. And then um, Mocha Miami from Fenty. That's my bronzer. But yes, y'all. Um, Make sure that you guys are, you know, protected. You understand what you need to do. I will see you guys hopefully on Sunday in my master class. I will post this for those who came in on late. I'm about to go drink me some tea and take some medicine. And I will, of course, see you guys at the bank.